Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to this quick mini series about Linux, specifically how to set up your Linux distribution to handle your entire development workflow. If you're wondering what is this weird screen that you're seeing here is kind of like a weird visual effect. This is the screen recording that I'm using on my new installation of Pop! OS. And I'm showing you this because this is the only software that I installed right after doing a fresh install of Pop! OS. I wanted to clarify this because I'm seeing a lot of videos, I saw a lot of videos every time where they show the Linux distribution with already a lot of like customized stuff or like pre-installed things. But I wanted to approach this from my personal point of view or like from the point of view that pretty much every developer or every regular user uh, finds themselves when you install a new distribution you pretty much have nothing on that machine and you have to install everything from scratch so why not doing it while recording what I'm doing and showing you how I like to set up my Linux machine in order to be my primary machine for development workflow so this is the screen recording if you're wondering what it is this is OBS, Open Broadcaster, is a really awesome open source software. It's multi-platform. It's for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, and it's fantastic. Super stable. I think it's built in Qt and QML, but it's wonderful. If, if you're wondering what software I'm using, this is OBS. Just check it out. It's, it's beautiful. But yeah, let's take this out of the way. And this is Pop! OS. Finally, System76 released Pop! OS as like a stable version, it's not a beta, it's not an alpha, it's totally stable, totally released. And of course, I wiped out my HTPC that was running before Ubuntu GNOME 17.04. And instead of going with Ubuntu, I decided to go with Pop! OS. So because this machine doesn't have literally nothing in it, like it's completely empty, no weird pre-built installation, no weird pre-built software, no bloatware, nothing. The only thing that comes with it is like, five application stuff like LibreOffice and some uh, default system things and the usual settings and there's nothing really special about this distribution other than it's totally focused for developers. It's like it was built for engineers and gives you a sort of like a blank canvas for you to build on top of it. So it doesn't come with any pre-built things that could annoy you or any limitations. And the developers at System76, they spent a lot of time on fixing all those annoying bugs that Ubuntu carries around since the beginning of time. So I used it just for one day super quickly without installing anything and it's really light and it's really good and I like it a lot. So I'm gonna show you what to do to install it and what we can do to properly customize it to fully support our development workflow. So first of all, we can go on the System76 website that it's actually really cool, system76.com. And they have, of course, just released the full banner here. If we access the Pop! OS page, this is a really cute page. It's a really well-designed and well-built. I love this little animation and the graphic is wonderful and the presentation of the old distribution it's fantastic it's really engaging you should definitely check it out but the important thing is right at the bottom so you can download of course the image and you have right off the bat the option to select if you want the image including the intel or amd driver or you want the distribution with the nvidia driver and that depends on your computer because the nvidia driver are not open source are proprietary if you want to actually use properly your graphic card you should download with this nvidia instead of tinkering around like spending hours and trying to install the proper drivers they already do everything for you so it's fantastic I downloaded the Intel AMD because my system is not the best and you already have the installing instructions. Installing instructions are really simple. You have to make just a bootable hard drive that you can use a USB flash drive. There's a free software that you can use for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. You create this bootable drive and then you restart your computer by changing the boot device to the actual USB where you installed Pop! OS. You follow the instruction, you try Pop! OS. If you wanna see how it runs on your computer, it recognizes all your driver, it recognizes Wi-Fi, Ethernet port, it recognizes all keystrokes on your keyboards for volume and brightness of your monitor and all stuff like that. But you continue the installation. The installation process is actually 
quicker than the normal one because it's really well done. Usually if you have experience with Linux in the past, your installation process was uh, uh, selecting the default like language and keyboard sections, keyboards option, blah, blah, blah. Then during the installation, you were asked to set up your computer. So decide the name of the computer, decide your username, your password, you want to encrypt your folders and blah, 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 all this, this kind of stuff. Instead, System76 takes care before, with Pop! OS takes care before of installing the operating system and then when you boot into your operating system for the first time, you can actually set up your computer. A little disclaimer, this mini series of tutorial on how to set up a Linux distribution to properly handle the development workflow can be followed with pretty much any Debian based distribution. So if you're on Ubuntu, if you're on elementary OS, if you're on a, a derivation of Ubuntu, you can pick whatever distribution you want. I went with Pop! OS because it's super light, it's development focused, and it kind of like feels it was built for me. So that's fantastic. Just to show you that I don't have anything crazy going on on my machine, I'm going to show you the settings here and I go into the details and these are the details of my machine. As you can see, this is not the most recent or beefiest of machine. I have only 8 gigs of RAM. I have just the Intel Core i3 processor that is like, of course, it's a quad core, but I don't have any graphics card. It's just integrated HD graphics 630 from the Kaby Lake. The operating system is 64 bit and I have just just one drive at 270 gigabyte and the hard drive is not even a PCIe NVMe or like all those fancy new ones it's just a regular SSD not even super expensive I think it's a Samsung SSD that I paid 80 bucks for it like 80 dollars so it's not the beefiest of the machine it's not the most snappiest or responsive but as you can see like of course, it's like a pretty fresh new installation vanilla, but it's really easy to use and it's really fast. I don't have any problem in using this uh, computer and everything looks really snappy and really responsive. If I activate the monitor and we check the system monitor, you will see that right now, by default, the resource and memory usage is at 2.2 gigabyte. This is one of like kind of like the major complaint that I have with Debian based distribution or mostly with Ubuntu fork distribution. Like a default memory usage is just two gigabytes. I think the guys at Elementary OS were able to drop the default usage to 1.7 gigabyte, but it's still it's still a lot. I cannot have by default two gigabytes of RAM occupied by just the operating system. It's, it's just insane like it's something that I don't really like so I would love to see a drop about it but it's not it's not a big deal everything else looks okay and as you can see the uh, OBS the screen recorder is the one that is uh, hogging 300 megabytes of memory so this should be around 1.9 gigabytes so just two gigabytes regular usage of ubuntu based distribution in terms of memory but nothing nothing major like nothing out of the ordinary and this video introduction is just like this nothing out of the ordinary it was just an introduction to say if you want to follow this series just install pop os or whatever other ubuntu based distribution and uh, let's hop on the next video to start actually working working with our machine, install the, all the crazy things that we need to do and have a lot of fun in defining our development workflow. So it's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next video, as usual, happy coding.